How's it going? I'm Andrew with Investors Hub, and today we're going to be talking with Mark Hake. Now, Mark writes for both Investor Place and Medium.com, and I'll link those down in the description. Uh, and he's going to be talking to us about Coinbase. He's also going to be sharing his thoughts on the general crypto market and a couple of other companies that he's been paying attention to in the market. So, yeah, if you like the video, be sure to share it. Leave us a comment. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. And uh, let's hear from Mark. Please note that our videos are not designed to be direct investing advice. We're here to gather the perspective of different investors. Our channel and our content should just be one stop on the journey of trying to find out where to put your money. So what were some of your thoughts on the news leading up to Coinbase's direct public offering and of the trading that happened that day and the few days afterwards? I studied the prospectus. I studied what they what they presented to the public and I was astounded at their huge profitability. Um, you know, in the first quarter, they have made more than 140 um, percent in revenue compared to all of last year. This is a true hockey stick thing going on right now in terms of their revenue. Uh, and I, I expect that you'll see continued growth in revenue that will continue to astound people. So that, yes, you're paying for it in the price in, the, in terms of the market valuation. But this is going to be an extremely profitable company. Now, I disagree with a number of uh, analysts who say, okay, because they're so profitable, there will be competition and therefore the fees will have to be cut back and all that kind of thing. Yes, uh, you could say you could have said the very same thing about Microsoft when it first went public and had a huge uh, market value. All right. And you could have said the same thing about uh, Google. All right. Which has always had a very high market value, a very high P.E. ratio. Uh, and the same thing with Facebook and some of these kind of companies. So in other words, extremely profitable companies, although they may not appear to have a moat at first, eventually can have a moat around their earnings simply because of the quality of service that they provide and what they do. And yes, and we were just talking about some of the, the characteristics of uh, Coinbase versus, uh, for example, um, Binance, which is, you know, a Chinese controlled uh, exchange, which is very popular. People like to use that, but they don't quite realize this is a foreign company and there are huge risks, massive risks with your money in a foreign company, especially a Chinese one. Given that relations between the United States and China are not that great, you should be very careful. So, that alone gives Coinbase a, a sort of, what, what should I say, intangible value. Um, you can't put that in numbers. You can't put that in the quality of earnings. But it's something that the other thing that I think that will come through is, yes, you're paying a higher fee than you might with some other exchange, but you're gaining a little bit of security as well. OK, so you're actually sort of getting and they're probably doing more scrutiny in terms of their desire to keep their reputation sound uh, compared to some of these others. I think the stock could easily go in the four to five hundred dollar range. But um, and this will become more apparent as uh, earnings come out over the next several quarters and as analysts get on board, basically. So you said the four to five hundred dollar range. And I've been scolded before about uh, people saying that you're never supposed to guess a price and a time. <laughs> I've asked that before and I've gotten yelled at. Uh, but if you set a price target for the four or $500 range, is there sort of a broad uh, range of time that you think that might happen? Within the next year, easily within the next year. Um, one thing that people don't quite realize is, yes, the stock has a market value of 100 billion, but only a portion of the shares that are outstanding were registered. So there's a sort of a short uh, aspect there, short squeeze, I don't want to call it short squeeze, but it's sort of a, a float issue. Does that mean that we would be scared that um, uh, other insiders could sell? Well, they could have sold at the, I, you know, at the, at the start and they, you know, a lot of them didn't. And by the way, I thought it was very smart that they didn't use the IPO process. This company is very, very intelligent. I liked it. I, I like it a lot. Now, the other main thing to keep in mind about Coinbase 
is what is driving all of this? What is driving the growth? And it is simply two things, Bitcoin and Ethereum. That is something like 90% of their revenue. As many analysts have said, you know, Bitcoin buying and Bitcoin and Ethereum buying is now past an inflection point of acceptability, both uh, with many investors and also with a good number of institutions. There will be more and more massive amount of buying and people and th this group has the uh, largest market share. They have something like 11% market share they're claiming right now. So what I'm arguing is that's the massive growth driver. You're going to see this, you know, double, triple over time. So do you think that investors are becoming wary of trading these public offerings in the first few days? Because you mentioned that uh, you were bullish on Coinbase over the medium term, but over that those first couple of days of trading were pretty ugly. Yes, um, <sighs> let's think about it from one from from their standpoint. Though their last trades in the secondary market before going public were in the two fifty dollar range, so it's been a massive success for them from the company's standpoint. But you're right. Nobody has a profit right now. Nobody who bought it has any kind of serious profit. No one could have bought it uh, unless they were buying it in some kind of pre-IPO market. All right. So this is one of those kind of weird situations where uh, you couldn't buy it on the IPO price. Basically, you had to buy it at either after it came out or at or the day it came out. So, and every single one of those prices is way above the $250 range that it was trading at before. That's a sort of looking back way of looking at things. Uh, I like to look forward and, and say, okay, what, let's project out revenue and let's project out earnings. I'm not going to give you my projections right now because I'm still studying the company. And, I and, and actually, I'm going to be writing an article on it this week. One of the things, I am a little frustrated with the company, though, because, and we talked about this before, that they don't um, allow... Uh, trading in certain really fairly popular altcoins, but they don't care. I mean, again, 90 some percent plus of their revenue comes from two coins, Bitcoin and Ethereum. So you write for uh, Investor Place and Medium.com. What are two companies to wrap all this up? Uh, what are two companies that you think that people should be paying attention to right now? Oh my gosh, I write so many articles <laughs> on so many different companies. Let me just tell you which, which stocks I like in my personal portfolio. Square, Tesla, and um, Marathon Digital Holdings, a Bitcoin mining company. And I actually own Coinbase too. I don't, I'm, if you read some of my articles, on, especially on Medium, uh, you'll see that I believe in concentrating your investments. I don't believe in diversification. I don't think you need more than five to eight stocks. By the way, I think you should keep your stocks separate from your uh, cryptos. I think you should keep them in different storage places so that in case there's any kind of meltdown in any kind of situation, at least you have this pile of money and then you have that pile of money. Those four stocks, Square, Tesla, Coinbase, and Marathon Digital Holdings. Hey, thanks for watching. And uh, if you like the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It's the best way to help us grow, and I'll see you again soon.